Good morning, Shaniqua. How you doing? You well? I'm good, thank you, Joel. How are you? I'm blessed. Always, in always, can't complain. Um, here we are to talk about you, really, just being a shining light, a beacon of inspiration. Uh, you, you, and big smile as well, you know. That's, that's, yeah. I think that's, I think that's what... I think that's what pulls people in, Shaniqua, that, 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 big, that big smile that you've got. Have you been told that before? Is that, is that a common thing? Thank you very much. Um, I've heard it a couple of times. Yeah, I haven't heard the beacon of inspiration, though. I'll definitely write that one down. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, you need to, you need to add that one to your arsenal. Listen, um, there's going to be some people out there who, you know, have been living in a cave uh, under a rock. Um, don't have Wi-Fi, who might not know who you are, Shaniqua. So for those people, um, let's start there. You know, who are you? What do you do? And how do you find yourself in the position where uh, we're talking in 2021? Oh, wow. So I am a presenter for News Round. And News Round is the children's news programme for the BBC. So it's on CBBC and I present the bulletins, so the news bulletins in the morning. And we have a lot of content online as well. So there's always um, a lot of information that's pumped out there for what we're doing. It's uh, something you always wanted to do, Shaniqua, because I'll tell you what, News Round is, uh, is a staple, been a part of my life forever. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, it's funny because it started off that program that um, broke up that period after school where you come in, you have your, you know, your sandwich and you sit down and watch every cartoon going. And News yeah. Round comes on and uh, we'd go running. That was a chance to come away from the screen. Um, <laughs> What? Not because we didn't like it, because it was just news for kids and we just didn't work out what, what why, why was it there. But all these years later, I just you, you couldn't imagine life without it. So just mm -hmm. talk about, you know, how you find yourself there. And, and like I said, was that something you always wanted to do? Yeah, I used to watch telly every single day. I used to live for the television. Like I, at one point, had this fake American accent from how I used to watch so much TV, it was ridiculous. So I definitely wanted to be in the box. And I always like, I'm the youngest of five in my family. So I've always been very like creative and inventive, putting on performances and putting on shows and stuff. So I've always like wanted to be on TV, wanted to be presenting as well. Um, I was one of those kids that, you know, like you want to do everything, but a lot of everything that I wanted to do was like a model or an actress or an, a singer and dancer, even though I can't sing very well. So yeah, um, as I've grown up, I've done different careers, but I've always found myself drifting towards the presenting side because it's something that I've always enjoyed the most. And then, yeah, I've ended up being here. So it's worked out in the end. When you say you've always done different careers, what do you mean? I mean, most people look at, um position that you're in now would be thinking you know that's something you identified early and worked towards so have you find yourself transitioning from one career to another or was it a case of needs must talk about that yeah it's more of a needs must so how I've grown up I haven't grown up with like a silver spoon in my mouth or anything so my main thing was always being able to you know survive and being able to eat so when it comes to certain careers, let's say like the entertainment industry, that was always kind of seen as like a luxury career and you need money to do that because you have to either volunteer or you have to do a lot of stuff for free. Um, and I can afford to do stuff for free or internships and stuff like that. So I had to make money. So I, in fact, I actually used to love cooking. I wanted to be a chef. So I worked a lot of like Caribbean food shops growing up um and then yeah I just went into admin because it was safe money you know and then when I had the opportunity I used to use my evenings always at a presenting or on radio or hosting events so yeah it was kind of my nine till five and then my five till nine and then I, I was like I need to turn this five till nine to my nine to five and then I just made that transition When you say you just made that transition, well, it's just like that. Oh no, it took a very long time. Well, that's that's what I want to that's what I want to dig down into because <laughs> there is um there's a lot 
I, listen, it's a career that a lot of people want. Um, it's yes. something that people aspire towards. And that's what I meant about with you being a beacon of light because we'll get into this a little bit later. But just, you know, in terms of being able to see on screen mm-hmm. black women doing it. Um, it's not, it's not, well, it's much more common now, but it's not a normal thing still. Um, so there's, there's a, I, I really want to find out how you fell into, you know, the kind of, because it's hard, you know, in terms of identifying this, uh, uh, a career in this place and, and then doing all the steps required to, to execute it, it's, it's not easy. So how did you get on the conveyor belt and what was it about, you know, the journey that made it appealing for you enough, but appealing enough for you to stay the course? Um, I think it started off when I was interested in people's stories and I was interested in writing. So I used to write for a few um, online magazines and then that kind of drifted onto me uh, doing interviews for like YouTube for people as well. And then I ended up having like um, a few like community radio stations I was working on. So Genesis Radio Birmingham, New Star Radio and I found the more I was doing that, I had different people, like older people, that would ask me to host events for them or ask me to, you know, do different bits for them. And that, for me, kind of showed me that, oh, maybe what I'm doing is, I'm I'm not as bad as I thought I was. Um, They thought I was pretty decent, which was really nice. So they, I've had a lot of people actually in my career that's given me a chance and given me opportunities to like um, showcase what I could do. And I've done a gazillion stuff for free. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Talk about it, girl. Talk about free. it. <laughs> Honestly, I've traipsed up and down a motorway stuff for free. Like, because growing up in like, um, I spent most of my life in Birmingham. And, you know, compared to, let's say, London, there isn't much as money that's flowing around to do stuff. So if you're doing something in Birmingham, say if it's like a low level um, production, then you ain't gonna get paid for free. All you're gonna get is maybe like some of your friends can come into the event for free and stuff um, as payment, you know, not even travel. So yeah, for a long time, I've been in applying for work experience everywhere and couldn't get work experience for years. And so I just kept um, carrying on with my full-time job and then everywhere I can, every weekend, every evening, there was always something that I was doing for free in the entertainment industry um, until, yeah, I think it took me, I think from when I was about 20 to 21 is is when I realized, I don't wanna say how old I am now, but yeah, when I was about 20 to 21, (laughs) (laughs) what I wanted to do and then, as in officially, I was like, this is what I want. In fact, when I was 18, I applied to go to university to do a broadcast journalism course. And I got in and then on the day I had my letter to say, oh yeah, you know, you're into uni. I was like, oh, I don't wanna go. I just didn't wanna go (laughs) because I don't know. I just, I just didn't want to go. I wanted to do it, but I didn't want to study for three years. I was like, it's not me that the sitting down in a lecture for, how many hours just didn't fit for me. So I didn't do it. But I did say to myself, I'm gonna make it without going uni. And thankfully it ended up happening. I love that um, because it speaks to a, a, a drive within yourself. I mean, all of the free work, all of the hours, all of the trudging up and down, the motorway, you know, in blind faith almost, is I guess listening to that voice of conviction inside you that kind of keeps confirming that you can do it no matter what the norms and you know yeah no matter what 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 the norms are but in terms of being inspired on your journey yourself was there anybody you looked up to and thought to yourself um you know what if they can do it I can do it um and I actually want to be just like them if not better um someone that inspired me a lot was Ramel London so Hmm. she's based in London she's I think she's like around my age black girl and she was it seemed like she was everywhere so I used to follow her on Instagram and she was doing everything left right and center and it was funny actually so I seen she got a job at Capital Extra a few years ago and then what was interesting she noted on the post that this is the first time she's actually had like 
a paid radio job all the times before she's been the tea girl working somewhere and and all of that and I couldn't believe it because I just assumed that she made it from early you know so it was funny actually just to see the graph that everyone has to put in so seeing her and her saying that and being honest with it was like okay yeah so it does take a long time and you do have to you know work from the bottom up and you have to keep trying and just shows that she got there you know so yeah she was definitely someone that I looked up to this would be considered a big break um for a lot of people so when you got the call um I'll talk about the process of getting to where you are now in terms of being on the BBC um because that must have been a a moment when you you secured this gig because in terms of all of what you just outlined sometimes um the carrot doesn't get any closer to the donkey <laughs> if you know what I mean yeah so I um I so I was working full time and then obviously I was applying for work experience with BBC the Yonks and I finally got it finally got two two weeks so I had to take two weeks off work and do the work experience did that and then at the end of the two weeks they sat me down and was like oh we really like you can you work here one day a week or can you in fact can you start working here and I was like oh well, I got my full-time job how much can you give me and it's like we could only give you one day a week so I was like okay so then <laughs> I'm a normal full-time job I was doing five days a week there and I was doing every Saturday with um local radio in Coventry and then that kept on happening for a while and then I'm tired <laughs> I'm tired but I still wanted it and then um eventually they said we can give you a few more shifts and I had to just take the leap and just quit my job and then thankfully I managed to get some shifts with them and I was working round the clock double shifts like I used to do five till one then one till nine um there so yeah it was a lot and then yeah then from that radio I then went to um WM radio and then started doing national radio and then I ended up here. So yeah, so as soon as I got into the BBC, I just flowed around different departments of the BBC. So, I mean, so you, you, it was just for you, it was just natural. You didn't really see it as a, as a big step, or, you know, rung on the ladder that you've, you've managed to step. Was it just so like, oh, well, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the host of BBC News right now. And no, no, no. That's no, it, no, you know, no. next stop, news at 10. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're just blasé in the office, you need like, you know, no, sorry, kind of no, no, in no, there. That's, that's, how, that's how I talk, that's how I talk. No, it was definitely a huge thing. And definitely something where, you know, it's something that I've always wanted. However, there was that bit of me that didn't think it was going to happen. Okay. And even though, in fact, I didn't think it was going to happen, I told my brother, actually, I was like, I give up. I give up because, in fact, a year ago today, I um, a year ago, my contract ended in Birmingham abruptly. My last day was on Christmas Day. Wow. And okay. that was it. They didn't give me any more shifts. And, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was unemployed. Mm. and I had my bills to pay and it was hard mm. and I thought to myself I've worked so hard to get into the BBC then I got there and then it just ended so I was applying for other jobs and like the bookies and stuff to work um, so I could pay my bills and I was doing cleaning and then I already applied for this job at News Round a few months before obviously I haven't heard anything so I thought it's not going to happen so I gave up completely um you know um because there was nothing else to do and then I got the call <laughs> in fact no I didn't get the call I did um Coventry started to give me some shifts you know and I started to work in Coventry and then I started to work in London as well with one extra um so I was getting slowly back on my feet after a few months of yeah being unemployed and then I got the call and it was like, oh, we really like you. And um, do you want to come up here and work on Newsround? I said, yes, straight away. <laughs> and <laughs> and the okay, like, right. Don't no, yeah. so you want to think about it? You can have a think about it and get back to me in a couple of days. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I said oh, yes, yeah. and I ran. I ran on the motorway. Who was the first person you told? Uh, my mummy. Of course. My mummy. She must have yeah. been over the moon for you. Oh, yeah. Over the moon. My mum, she watches it every single day. Like, my mum always, she she's always supports me. And even from, like, all the events I was doing for free, my mum would always be there no matter what. She's the one person. And even, like, when I had my first chance of, like, um, presenting on radio, I asked, like, all my family and friends if they can text me whatever sending in a little text <laughs> so yeah so I had to call my mummy um you got the gig in probably one of the most pivotal years for black people that I can remember um I'm not going to give away my age either uh, <laughs> so I, I'm on, I want you to talk about working at the BBC you know, you've talked about the circumstances of being unemployed 2009 in Christmas Day, pretty much, and then getting the gig in 2020. Such a pivotal time. And I guess to be on screen and to be in a news institution as, as big as uh, the BBC during that moment, how did that weigh down on you? And, and how did you feel kind of when you were executing your role? Did you take on anything extra or was it you were so immersed in just delivering and being the professional that you are? Um, that that consumes you or, or did you kind of take on everything else in terms of the responsibility I guess all black people in a position in the media had last year yeah I think it was a mix of both really because at the same time doing television is very new for me being on a platform and you know even like having social media as well like that's something that people are watching very closely as well so it was a lot for me to adjust to my new role being feeling like kind of like an ambassador as well um for it but for news round and then um yeah with what was going on i think i felt very fortunate the fact that i was at news round while that was happening because we it was beautiful to see how we covered everything. Like we definitely, I, I'm very proud of the content that we've covered and we didn't shy away from anything. Everything that was going on, the kids knew what was going on and we stick to the facts as well and every updates. And yeah, we actually um, worked on some specials for it. So we had um, a Growing Up Black in a UK special we had a growing up black in the US special and especially like the some of the um, black presenters of CBBC. So myself, um, De Graff at News Round, we had Reese, that's a CBBC presenter, Moxie, who's on Blue Peter. And we sat down and we shared a video speaking about our experiences of, you know, being black in, um, in the UK and what life is like for us. And I don't know, I didn't realise that we could do stuff like that and be so honest, you know? Um, so yeah. There was, a time we, there was a time we couldn't, Shaniqua. So yeah. that's what I mean about being in a privileged position that you're in. Did it weigh down on you? It's interesting to hear that you guys got together and had those conversations and orchestrated that type of content. And sorry to cut you, I was really interested in what you were saying. Um, but there was a time then we, black people couldn't have been as open, especially in your position and hope to have gone on and ascend in their career. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so listen, I, I, you deal with kids and um, I think your role is probably more important than a lot of others because that next generation get to see you talking your truth and engaging with you. How's that been for you? Are you how, how are the kids with you now? And, you know, it's, we all know the importance of being, uh, we all know the importance of identifying what we, put into our kids and, and making sure that that's you know as positive can be and uplifting and educational um have you become more aware of you know your position and have kids got, become more aware of you did, did the kids down the road know who you are now? <laughs> yeah i got and stopped at asda a couple of times which is really sweet so i can't wear my headscarf to asda anymore which is a shame um also 
<laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> No, just in case they want a picture, I need to make sure I look half decent and the camera is You like... make them know what a black woman looks like when she looks like how she looks like, right? Well, I've actually I've been on TV with my headscarf already, actually. So they, they've seen it, so they know they know what it's like. They they know what it's like. I'm, you um, know what I'm saying that I just took mine off before I got on, so you know I know. <laughs> so so good. the kids, the kids are identifying you in the street now. That must feel good. Yeah, it's lovely. And you know what I really enjoyed as well? So, you know, when it comes to, like, um, having a name like Shaniqua, every now and then I get people, you know, they don't know how to pronounce it and stuff like that. However, I seen um, a teacher sent me this picture on Twitter and basically the school, they were learning their sh words. And some of the kids are writing Shaniqua and some of their, some of their sh words. And I was like, that is beautiful to see that is beautiful. That really is beautiful. lovely you know um so it's stuff like that to see when they hear the name shaniqua they're not thinking hmm shaniqua like yes it's another name thing about. i love it though because you won saying with shaniqua paris listen you were born to be a star that's the way i see it well okay then I'll, I'll take that <laughs> Listen, that's 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 a stage name if ever I heard one. That name's got all like glittery stardust around it. So no, no, real talk. I'm I'm, I'm keeping it hundred. Um, international Women's it. International Women's Day next mm -hmm. month. Um, giving away when I'm doing this now. But um, talk about that day there and and just you know because people are always looking for inspiration. People are always looking for role models. You're definitely one of those, and I guess in five ten years time you'll be an even bigger role model like i said there's a generation of children growing with you i can't see you going anywhere you're good at what you do you love what you do you've worked hard to get here so Thank you. um talk about you know this because uh, throughout the month the voice are going to be looking at different black women who inspire who are in inspirational positions who are in positions of potency you're one of those but just in terms of being uh inspired yourself by women of similar ilk around you um Talk about who kind of you look up to and think, yeah, you know what, the trajectory they're on, what they've done, what how they've executed it. That's something I'd like to emulate. Um, well, for International Women's Day, I suppose for that sense, I like to look at a few different angles with women. So one of them is career. Another one is their relationships with how they treat people, their integrity and their authenticity, because I think those are the things that make a woman special about them and the nurturing side of a woman, not when it comes to like just kids, but being able to help people in general and help people when they don't have to. So I've got a few women that I look up to because I know that their heart is in the right place and they stand for things and they're brave, you know? I think being a woman in general, you have to be brave because every time you're walking outside on that street, you you know, like you're a woman and people want what you've got. So you have to protect it. Um, you know, there's like women that, a lot of women will can't even like jog at nighttime because it's dangerous, you know? So there's always something um, that we have to protect. So we're always on alert, you know? Um, so being in certain industries, whether that's like media, the entertainment industry or um, in the corporate world and stuff, they have, you have to be vigilant. And some of the women that I look up to, um, Marisha Stevenson, I look up to, um, definitely. And yeah, just women that I don't want to swear, but own their stuff, you know? Their ish. Yeah, own their ish. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. In, um, I, I, I'm conscious that I'm probably running out of time here, so I don't want to, because I could talk to you for all day long. But in terms of, like, um, solidarity amongst Black women, you know, and, and just an appreciation of Black women in... Uh, advanced positions in any industry you know um is there been a better time are, are we a generation of people that are benefiting from all of the toil and the uh 
commitment and the efforts of you know our, our Windrush generation gone past. I haven't asked you where your family are from, but just just uh, are we in the best time? And just do you allow yourself to look up what you know how the landscape would look in in five ten years time? And just what that would mean for the generation coming up behind us? Yeah, I, I would. I think so. I think, you know, for each generation, there's always people that pave the way for the new set to come through, you know, because I wouldn't be here um, if it wasn't for other Black women that have done the same thing I've done and, are do it, and, and have done it well. Because I feel like sometimes when you're the one of a few black people in certain positions, you kind of feel like you represent all black people. Mm. And I can imagine that, you know, for for example, with Lenny Henry being such a superstar that he is, if he done a really bad job or said something that was proper crass or some madness back in the day, he could have been axed off. And then that then would have had an effect on the other people coming through now because it's like oh well we tried it with Lenny it didn't work so we ain't going down that route again um so yes yeah, so those definitely those women definitely have um changed for how it is now and I think there is still definitely um a lot to do because the fact that you know we're having this conversation just shows that there's still you know work that needs to be done and things that will change and I reckon it it definitely will be better and it will be different um so yeah i think in five ten years time we're going to keep on evolving and it will be easier and less of a thing i think it i think it will become normal i reckon it will become normal your 2020 goes um so where are where are your family from where, where what's the, the same place as your mug sorry Oh. The same place as your mug that you're drinking from, yeah. Is that, okay, cool. Do you get out there regularly? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, well, good, good, every good. couple of years. Best holiday in the world. Listen, I, I, my last question, if you could, um, you know, I ask this all the time, if you could wave your magic wand and everything went exactly how you wanted it to go for, for 2021, well, what does that look like, Shaniqua? Oh, Lord have mercy. Um... If I could wave a magic wand on a big scale or just for me? I don't think we scale down for nothing. All oh, right. On a big scale, world peace. World peace. Everyone just happy, comfortable, not hungry. And yeah, world peace. On a personal level? on a personal level um it would have to be oh you know what i would be doing i would have the biggest allotment and i would grow everything under the sun in fact no it'll be really sunny here as well so i can grow like mangoes and stuff um, <laughs> you get carried away <laughs> you, said <laughs> magic wand. <laughs> you said it's a magic wand so yeah um that, that's the kind of stuff i'll be doing at home but yeah i would um we would um oh that's a long question i don't know there would um i don't know if you're frozen or you're thinking i'm thinking <laughs> i don't know Wait, wave a magic wand and yeah, I'd probably just say, to be honest, it would be just to, for me anyway, to keep carrying on doing what I'm doing and for just news rounds to get bigger and better so we can reach all kids. And for the, the kids that are with the young Joel Campbells who used to run away from the TV when news round would come on, it would be for them to sit down where they are and watch it and enjoy it. Had you a bit on my screen, Shaniqua, I wouldn't have run anywhere. So, you know, it, it is what it is. I um, really appreciate your time. And, you know, I know you're busy. So fitting this in at, you know, such short notice, I really, really appreciate it. I hope it's not the first and last time we talk. Um, wishing you continued and more su success in your role. And, uh, uh, you know, unless, you know, you've got anything else to say, until next time. Is there anything else you want to leave our viewers, readers, listeners with? Um, I want to say that one thing I will say is like, if anyone is like extra 
out there or like a little bit awkward and stuff and you want to get into this industry and you feel like there isn't a space for you there's always a space for you trust me because being who you are and just being yourself um is the best skill that you could possibly have so always make sure that comes through if you want to do this but yeah